click, click. Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTalker.com and I'm sitting here in my car, my Nissan Sentra. Uh, Eric Kim, thank you for giving me this great idea of being outside but still inside. So I'm uh, giving back the Leica Q to my rep. I've had it for about five days. Uh, this won't be a full review, obviously, because I haven't had it long enough. So, but I have five days. I've taken some pictures. Uh, I should get another loaner on a long-term basis, either back from my rep or I'll get it directly from Leica. But I just thought I would just do a kind of a closer. Um, a lot of people are a little bit anxious about this camera. Like they think somehow the hype is too good, and somehow uh, this camera is going to fail them. I can assure you that this camera is the best uh, non-interchangeable Leica camera that they've ever come out with. Uh, they have always been quirky, they're non-interchangeable cameras. I could even say it goes as far as saying even their non-M camera. So even Leica T, I liked it. The image quality was great. Uh, the interface was, um, there's many good things about it, but there's some things that are a bit quirky. AF wasn't that great could always be updated uh, Leica in firmware but this camera right out of the bat uh, I mentioned something in my uh, first impressions about the AF on this I, I don't know either if it's the way I'm shooting now but um, when I first tested it against the Fujifilm X100T it seemed like the X100T was more accurate outdoors but uh, as I retested it over and over again uh, actually you know this this is definitely faster and more accurate the Fuji X100T tends a little bit hunt, like zip zip like that. Uh, this one seems to just get it right or it just gets it wrong, like any AF contrast detect type camera. But um, this AF is very fast, it's very good. Of the, I haven't tested every non-interchangeable uh, camera like this, uh, including the RX1. I've only played with it a little bit and I've uh, watched and read some reviews on it but this is fast the manual focus is also very quick uh, with the um, focusing tap and the focus peaking is uh, so clear and when it zooms in so even when I was doing macro uh, one trick in macro is to set the distance that you want and then bring the camera to where you want it to be but I'll post some pictures to show how good it is but uh, I also did a video test with uh, camera girl a video it's not going to be as good as the Sony's or the Olympus with the five access image stabilization uh, via sensor, but it is definitely better than any of the other Leica M's before it and definitely better than uh, uh, Fujifilm, which is kind of famous for not having great video because of their non Bayer style uh, X Trans 2 CMOS sensor, which they are working on and the, uh, there is going to be a next generation sensor coming out, but for the meantime, comparing with the Fuji X100T video, this is better. Uh, you'll, if you watch the video, you'll see uh, if that is good enough for you. 60 frames per second, uh, 1080p with optical image stabilization. The sound is pretty good too. Uh, I still see my Ricoh GR is better because of the speakers facing forward, but uh, as you would have seen in my video, uh, ambient noise was reasonably uh, well controlled. So image quality, again, uh, everyone's coming out with these pictures, fantastic image quality. Is it comparable to an M series body, like an M240 with a 28mm Sumilux or Sumicron? That, uh, wait for DP review or someone like Steve Huff who probably has, who will have an M240 with uh, a Sumilux or Sumicron. But my guess is that this will be uh, equal to to a M body with the Sumilux or better than. That is my prediction because when a uh, lens and a sensor is matched up, they tend you tend to get better image quality. Now when I say better, what do you mean by better? Is it gonna be sharper? In terms of sharpness, this is still a Sumilux, it's a Leica lens, so I would say it's just as sharp, but it's just a matter of the rendering. How would it render the out of focus areas as well as um, you know, evenness across the frame, sharpness in the corners, uh, light fall off, uh, moray, those sort of things. So that will be soon to be seen as more and more reviewers get their hand on this camera. But I don't think that's uh, the most important thing. Uh, if you want full frame, you want to shoot Leica, and um, 
you want a one camera to take you everywhere. The biggest issue I think anyone's going to have is with the 28mm lens. I am used to it because I shoot Ricoh GR. I like the 28mm aspect ratio and perspective. Some just find it it's everything seems too far that they have to come too close. So for street photography and other types of photography, people will have to change the shooting style. And maybe they just don't want to. For point and shoot, if you can call it that, uh, Eric and I, Eric Kim and I spoke about it. Um, for point and shoot, 28 mil is a good uh, compromise focal length because it allows you to be able to shoot like this, as well as it allows you uh, video will be more stabilized, and you also get more in the image. So if you're doing a group shot uh, with a 28, you can squeeze in a few more people than versus a 35. So uh, that's my uh, conclusion of this camera. I can't wait to get it back and shoot with it. Uh, Leica, you've hit a home run with this camera, and um, yeah, I just can't wait to shoot with it again. So thank you for watching, uh, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. And uh, my conclusion, this is a great camera. If you can afford it, get it. It's a fantastic camera. If you can't afford it, well, then the X100T is a great option. So thank you for watching. Wait for my full review coming up. Uh, when I get a sample, another sample copy for a longer time, as well as a written review on my blog. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again. Click, click.